Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of my Java tutorial series and uh, in this episode I'm going to teach you the basics of classes in Java. So as we had in the previous episode we need a main class and the main function where we can execute our program so go ahead and type out that if you haven't already and um, now we're going to create our very own class so uh, go to the folder new file and what type of class do we want let's say we'll make a dog class dog.java now we have two Java files now uh, the main class is where we start to execute our program and we don't want any more code in this particular class we want to handle our program in dog.java and how we set up this is exactly the same as the main class so we type class dog and remember that dog here class name must be identical to the file name so um, if you get errors because of that that's probably why um, and now we're going to make a constructor for our dog which basically is what can we say it's is a main function of the class itself so when we initialize the dog class that's the code that's being executed so let's make the constructor and and how we make the constructor is uh, as following public dog Oop. parentheses and curly brackets so it looks like a function but it doesn't return anything not even void so this is the constructor of our dog class now what a class actually is or classes are often referred to as objects in Java so our dog object can have its own private uh, variables um, so let's say uh, what do we want our dog to have as attributes um, a dog may have a name so we'll have string name oops and remember when we initialize a string name like this it's actually the same as saying equal null so this name is not initialized and that can make all sorts of fun errors when we are trying to use that uh, variable later so what we can actually do is we can say that the dog class cannot be instantiated without n the, the name variable actually having something there so the way we do that is type string name in the dog constructor so now we cannot instantiate the class without passing in a string variable that we will use for the name and how so now the name this name variable is just is only available inside here but we want it to actually be put in this variable and that's actually very simple we type this which is this class dot name which is this variable uh, this as this class and dot name as this name variable is equal to name and since name does not have this in front it's actually this variable we can also do like this string n is equal and the name dot this dot name is equal to n and uh, but then we actually don't need this so this will be the exact same um, as a convention I like to put it this way um, and so does many other Java programmers and that's the norm in Android so that's what we're going to uh, go go ahead and do and now we can go ahead and instantiate our class in the main function the way we do that is we type dog object type dog and what what we'll call this dog we'll call it dog Fido 
is equal to new dog, a new object of the dog class, and this is not this is not allowed because the dog constructor expects a string variable, and we'll actually have to pass in a string here, Fido, like this, and now we have a, oops, dog is supposed to be here. We have a dog object that we call dog Fido and we instantiate with a new dog class with where, where, where we're passing in the variable Fido and storing it in the string name variable. So this doesn't actually do much. And uh, so what we can do now is we can create a function as you guys remember from the last episode uh, public string get name and this function will return oops return name so this function when we call dog.getName we will get whatever name is stored here and hence the name that's passed into the constructor so let's now we create our uh, dog Fido and let's print out the name of this dog and the way we do that is system out the print line you should know this by watching the other episode if you don't really remember go ahead and watch those again and come back to this and now we'll have dog Fido dot get get name function so this function will return the name Fido so let's try and run this and see if we're actually correct And by the way, the way we start these programs with multiple classes is just the same as we've done previously, so there's nothing more to it. So let's compile and run, and we get Fido, which is what we expected. And now we can have multiple dog objects, and I'll show you that now. Dog. Uh, Goofy is equal to new dog. Oops. And we'll, his name will be Goofy. All right. And uh, we'll try and print out Goofy and see how we do. So now we have two dog objects. One has the name Fido, one has the name Goofy. But they both have their own local name variable so it's not like when we create this object the name here says Fido and when we create this ob object it's changed to Goofy that's not the way it is they actually have their own name variable inside their own uh, own object so let's try and compile and run this and we get Fido and Goofy now we can also have add more attributes to our dogs. Let's say what type of other information might a dog have. We may have uh, an owner. Owner's name. And we will say that a dog doesn't necessarily have a owner. So we'll just have the um, owner name as optional and the way we actually fix that is if we do have a dog that eventually gets an owner we can use a function to put value into that variable so the way we do that is as follows public 
void because we don't want to return anything set owner name and this will need to pass in a string name owner name is equal to name and as I said earlier this is not really good practice in in uh, Android so we'll change that like this and this dot owner name is equal to owner name and we'll create a get function uh, uh, while we're on it public string get name owner name actually return owner name like this so let's say Goofy does not have a owner but Fido does have an owner so we'll say dog Fido dot set owner name to who owns this uh, Fido dog um, Frank owns the Fido dog but now the interesting thing uh, comes here because let's print out who the owner is of each dog dot get owner name so we'll print out the owner name of each dog and only Fido does have an owner so uh, Goofy will print null and Fido will print Frank so let's see if I'm correct and I am this returns null and that's not really good so um, because if we were if we were to use this name for something else to compute some th something or display something to the user returning null is really not not so great so we'll make an easy and quick fix for that and when we uh, call get owner name we will first check if the owner owner name is equal to null whoops and if it is uh, equal to null then we will return something different than null return no owner whoops owner so if the owner name doesn't have any value it will return no owner and if it does have an owner name it will return the owner name so let's see if we fixed it compile run and we get Fido Goofy and Frank is Fido's owner and we don't have any owner for Goofy now one last thing I want to cover in this video and that's multiple constructors we can have this very same solution with uh, the uh, uh, dog name so let's say for some reason a dog does not have a name let's say it's a uh, street dog we can actually make two constructors in the same class and it's actually very simple public oops, public dog and that's it so we can now instantiate dog without passing in the string name which can be very handy but now we get the same problem as we got with the owner because neither owner nor the name is actually instantiated so in the get name uh, function we may uh, call all dogs that does not that are not instantiated with names we'll call them street dogs or yeah we'll call them street dogs so if 
name is equal to null return street dog all right so let's make another class all the way to the bottom uh, we'll make a dog new sorry not class uh, an another object I mean street dog is equal to new dog now this will be perfectly valid because we created this constructor the constructor that has this signature which is a string and here it looks for the signature which is empty and it's perfectly valid so let's I'll just copy this and paste it here and we'll substitute the street dog get owner name and get name like this so our street dog should now have print out the values um, street dog and no owner let's see if I'm correct compile I'm not actually because I forgot a semicolon and the way I detect that is uh, dog Java uh, line 16 error no semicolon expected or semicolon expected and it gives me this nice little arrow and it's very clear that this is actually the line it's line 16 of the dog class so that's how you troubleshoot um, let's try and compile again with a semicolon this time and it works and we got street dog and no owner so it's just what we expected and uh, that's been the very basics of objects in Java and uh, for the next video I thought I'd cover inheritance briefly and then we're off to Android programming so we'll actually be making an app so this is basically what you need to know to make a simple app if you guys have any uh, wishes for types of apps or what you want to learn with Android programming please let me know and comment below what do you want to learn in Android please comment below I'll cover inheritance in the next video and then we'll be off to Android programming and that's gonna be real fun bye